Yes. Okay, that's great. So, so next about thirty minutes um, at Penn State, we will <clears throat> have myself and Dr. Hanneman will talk about some of our updates on the research we have been doing for precision crop load management on apples. Um, let me see. <clears throat> so, so here is, is our kind of personnel that are working on the projects. Um, so myself and Dr. Hanneman, and then we have some students um, here. Uh, I think uh, the first four already graduated, and then even um, Dr. McLean uh, is becoming our faculty member at Penn State right now. And then we have the the NASA students is working on the project uh, and ongoing to this uh, new semester, uh, new season. Um, <clears throat> so for us, um, we have been working on from pruning to the green food thing. So it's it's kind of all the stages for crop load management on apples. Um, and then I will present the first first part of the presentation is detection and organization, and then Dr. Hanneman will present the other parts. It's more on the actuation part. Um, so I would just uh, kind of follow up with uh, with use um, like tree structure recognition uh, rec or reconstruction. So we did some work on the pruning site afterwards after the the re the tree re reconstructed. You can see this is just a simple. Kind of structure we did uh, using a lidar sensor, but it's it's much kind of very simplified tree structure. But this is just showing some of the the path planning that we have worked on for uh, for the pruning. And you can see for the first one is is using the regular industrial robotic arm, and then see how we can uh, using this arm to to kind of move our end effect cutters to to the certain branches to cut the branch off. And the second one is more on on a, a customized um, Cartesian manipulator. So it's like three three directional uh, x, y, and z, and move the end effector to also to the cutting points. Um, yeah, I would just quickly go through, and if you have questions, we can talk about it later. Um, and then we move to the buds detection parts. Uh, we actually look into the flower buds from uh, from very uh, like early silver tip and then green tip. And then the tie cluster. So we took images uh, with uh, different platforms. One is from MOOC um, the, that uh, have full cameras to cover the whole tree. And also we have another um, system using developed by Doc Choice Lab, and he, and she went to Florida later. Uh, but this is the camera still here. We used the camera for taking images, um, <clears throat> and then we use uh, uh, develop artificial intelligence kind of deep learning models for for uh, for kind of processing the images and then we can uh this is a just a kind of um a live video shows that those those flower buds can be detected from those uh by those models and um and here are some results we actually um used the two type of one is using the steel region camera and one another one using the just using our phone take images you can see that we can get pretty high accuracy with yolo uh models um, and then, uh, of course, right now we are taking images pretty close to the tree, uh, to the tree. So the image, uh, kind of the resolution is pretty high. Uh, we are still working on more like for the whole tree struct for, for the whole tree level of bird detection and to, in order to count the number of birds in a, in, a, in one particular tree, but that is still going on, but we are, this is more like results for, uh, closer, uh, images. So we can get a pretty high accuracy for the bird detection. <clears throat> and then goes to the flower stages. Uh, so what the purpose we're doing flower flower and flower cast detection is more on for the the blossom thinning. And also we have been also thinking about the, the precision pollination as well. So it's kind of like thinking developing machine vision models to uh, detect flowers, individual flowers and also flower clusters. So this is how we did um, for uh, we took images from those um, uh, still vision cameras. And then uh, we label the, the, the individual flowers uh, and then using the models, we can actually detect the flowers. Uh, this is examples we did for king flower uh, detection. So um, this is more particularly for like for the pollination and also for the plus and thinning, we can estimate the flower stage, flower development stages, then can help us to to make decision when we should do the 
uh, thinning or pollination. So you can see from the flower stage from 20% to 80%, uh, we have uh, the accuracy um, higher on to lower, but the, because when you have 80% of flower open, there's there's a lot of flower clusters in the flower flowers, so the accuracy uh, went down a little bit. Um, and then, but the particular with, for this, we are looking for the king flowers. Is male that most of the time is located in the center of a cluster. Um, and then we also look into flower cluster detection and localization. This is more for our purpose of doing the blossom thinning, the precision blossom thinning, uh, using using kind of uh, uh, like smart sprayer or target sprayer uh, to tuck those flower clusters. Um, this are, you can see those bounding boxes, the cloud, flower cluster we detected. And then we're trying to using the geo reference locations to uh, to identify each flower cluster at X, Y uh, uh, plane. Uh, right now we're just talking on 2D dimensional trees. Um, this can be further step to uh, to the three dimensional, but now it's only X and Y. Uh, so we we have marked the, each individual flower cluster with with its all coordinates, and then that will help us for further uh, precision uh, blossom thinning. Um, and then for next uh, for the fruits green fruits part, we uh, we also look into like the green fruits and then the stem. Uh, detection. So here is is how we did that, and we took a lot of images that fairly close to uh, fairly close to the uh, to the clusters. Um, but this is more like for uh, for the robotic thinning purpose. We also have another study that students working on for for counting purpose that will take image a little bit further, so we can see um, most portion of the or even the whole tree. Uh, in one image. So this is more like closer looking. You can see that uh, we can uh, detect the, uh, the, the the green fruits and also the stem. Um, and this is also, for, like I said, is for more for a green fruit uh, thinning purpose. So we, if we have individual fruits and also the stem, then we know the location and then we know how to appro approach our end factor uh, position on end factor each individual fruits to remove them. Um, and then, so this is pre, uh, a bit results from there. So we can have um, like 80 some percent of the accuracy for uh, for the green fruits, but the stem is a little bit lower because uh, the stem is, is pretty tiny in the image. So it's kind of a little bit difficult to identify the stems, uh, but look into more uh, into detail, like if the, the, the fruits have larger pixel uh, aerial in the image, then we have a higher accuracy. Um, that means if you look into the fruits more closer uh, during the thinning, uh, robotic thinning, then you have better, um, better fruits detection accuracy. And also, we look into the orientation of the fruits uh, because when you when we have we, we thought about like when we approach fruits, we want to approach fruits from from their um, the calyx ends, so we can actually uh, cutting the stem off. So that is this is the the algorithm we develop for. Um, for the orientation, uh, the fruit orientation detection. Um, and you can see those are uh, the fruits and then the, their orientation from this picture. The right now is most in 2D dimensional, but it's, it's could be uh, extended in the 3D environment. Uh, here's some results. Uh, you can see we actually um, can get over like 80, 90% of the fruits get a correct orientation within, uh, within 30, 30 degree arrow. So uh, we don't actually, uh, we, uh, we can tolerate some kind of arrows when we approach the fruits, but we can still remove them um, from, uh, by using robotic anti-factor. Um, and also we did some uh, fruits and stem pairing. So we know that um, like, uh, and clustering. So we know which fruit, <laughs> excuse me, uh, how many, like, how many, like what kind of fruits are, are belongs to the same cluster. So for the green fruit thinning, it's very important to remove certain number of fruits from a cluster and remain one or two fruits from the cluster, right? So we, we need to understand, like, to know how many fruits in particular cluster, and then we know which one we should remove and which one we should remain. So this is how, this is what we did for clustering. We, we're pairing, uh, first pairing the stem and fruits. Uh, we can get some, like, 80%. Um, 
eighty percent accuracy for this kind of stem pairing. Uh, so and then later we um, actually do the clustering. So for example, if there's three fruits or belongs to the same cluster, uh, we mark them as one cluster. So we know that okay, we have one or two fruits need to remove from this cluster. So now the accuracy is, is about close to 70%, um, and then probably still need to be improved. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's pretty much my side for uh, for for the um, detection and localization part. And now I will move, uh, transition to Dr. Hanneman for, uh, for the next part that we did for access and actuation. Okay, so um, I, I think that when we look at the spectrum, there, well, there is a spectrum of uh, of approaches here where we do these things completely 100% manually, which is pretty much what we're commercially doing these days, uh, all the way to fully automated. And and Terrence, I did want to mention, I, I was glad that you presented these different pathways, kind of the thinking of these processes, uh, because I think there's a lot of room for bringing these technologies in that maybe aren't taking us all the way to robotic removal, but yet are very valuable. But eventually we want to be heading that way. So um, Long, did you give me, do you want me to give the signal or did you give me access? It, like, can you just advance slides? I'll, I'll just tell you to advance. Or oh, do you have the slides or do you want to share the screen? It's for me, okay. Do you want me to stop sharing? No, no, just go ahead and advance the slide. Oh, me. okay, okay, one second. Okay, so in, in those different stages that Long presented, we've been doing work in, in actually trying to automate these. Um, and we've done robotic pruning systems for dormant pruning. There's been two approaches. Long talked a little bit about the, the using a commercially available robotic arm. Um, but we also developed a Cartesian robotic system, which would go out, it's a prototype, um, which would be able to, to remove the appropriate branches early in, in the season. Next. Um, you can see the bu mechanical bud removal prototypes that we're also looking at. So when we get to the actual buds starting to develop and after we've identified them, there's been two views of this. One is a scissor type approach, one is a brush type. And effectively, we, we, I think it's a lot more realistic that we'd be looking at some sort of uh, scissor type. It's, it's definitely an easier uh, approach. And, Using these two end effectors to remove blossoms, uh, this is the cluster, you know, pre before they've they've opened up into multiple blossoms. You can see we've we've reached um, between 80 and 90 percent, 80 and 95 percent removal effectiveness. You might say the brush looks more more effective, but you have to remember these were done manually um, using a handheld device rather than actually a a, a, a robotic system. Um, the scissor that I think is going to be more effective in the long run. Next slide. Also been looking at targeted spray once the blossoms are open. So once we've identified uh, the, the blossom clusters, uh, this we've been looking at how we would actually remove these using a spray system. This could also be used for artificial pollination. Now, in this case, we're really looking at actually spraying a thinner onto a cluster. Uh, Long, can you go to the next? So hit the target sprayer for, yeah, you can see in these videos, uh, three approaches. One is a targeted spray using vision system. The second is a boom type sprayer, which would also, well, it all, which would also use a, a vision system. Uh, and the third is the just traditional air blast sprayer. So the targeted sprayer is, is picking out individuals. Um, the boom is is just trying to hit the targets as you go with a higher speed. But the first two are more precision oriented, whereas the air blast sprayer just sprays the, the material out um, everywhere, essentially. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? So I think what's really important here is comparing these three, the flower detection, detection accuracy was not, almost 94%, long it pointed that out. But we look at the last two columns, the total chemical usage and the average number of fruit set for each of those systems. Um, and you can see that the air blast sprayer uses a considerably, considerable more amount of, of material, which makes sense. 
And our fruit set results were actually uh, best with the, the air blast sprayer and the um, Cartesian target sprayer, which is, which is definitely a, a higher precision approach. Uh, I think that you kind of have to not pay too much attention to the average spray time per tree. I always have to tell our grad students when they build their prototypes and they're really slow and they say, oh, this is way too slow, that you can always speed up a mechanism and, and not to worry too much about that. Um, I think what's important here is that, that we do have more precise ways of applying material and still getting desired fruit sets. Next, please. Okay, so this is another unit that Long is, and his group has been testing. Um, this, this is actually doing it on a robot, a ground robot. And again, this is with that, that uh, target sprayer. Well, you know, obviously it's moving slowly, but it's just a, just a demonstration essentially. Okay, for you. okay, the last part is getting back to the green fruit thinning and some of the prototypes we've developed to remove green fruit robotically, utilizing the vision systems that you saw uh, when Long presented those. So we've, we have some actual end effectors, uh, three different types, and the, one, the results you're seeing here utilizing this, um, it's, a, it's a slicing, a, a device that slices off the, uh, the, each fruit the target fruit. Um, and you can see using the, the handheld prototype and then actually mounting it to a robotic arm, we've had good success with being able to, uh, when we've been able to reach the target to be able to remove the fruit. Go ahead, Long. We also developed two ed prototype end effectors. Um, one is one that that's isolates the, the target fruit that you want to remove and cuts it off. And the second one actually targets the king fruit, the one you want to keep, and cuts everything else off. And these were tested for what we call singulation, in other words, isolating the appropriate target fruit, but we didn't actually add a cutter to it at this point. Long, if you could go to the next. Um, path planning, Long mentioned that. However, I want to show just a, a video of this. Uh, path planning and targeting in the field. This is without the cutter. It can show how we were able to singulate each fruit to be removed using a, a commercial robotic arm. And then if you go to the, the next slide. This one is an actual removal uh, video of, of uh, a system finding the fruit and then actually removing it. It's slow, yes, but it is a prototype. We tried pulling and other methods, but you know, you, you end up with damage at the wrong places, either break, breaking branches or pulling the, the fruit off at the, um, at the, you know, at the wrong end um, that can actually damage the branch. So um, we think cutting is the best mechanism. And this is the final result of this part. Um, essentially with a correction that was made, we can encapsulate, we can reach 95% of the fruit and encapsulate and cut 87%. And that was based on 40 trials. Okay. And so our future work is to continue the, the work on the flood, the, the bud and flower detection, um, look at cluster maps, continue the green fruit counting and size estimation for crop load management, and continue on our robotic uh, actu um, action taking. Okay, that's all we have then.